Uh, all right. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our uh, Monday, December 5th, 2022 Board of Commissioners meeting. At 4 o'clock, we had a, a work session, and I'd like to go ahead now and call our 6 o'clock uh, meeting to order. And our first item is the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance, and I'd like to ask if Commissioner Selena Jarvis would lead us in that this evening. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the opportunity to come to this place to do the work of the people of Currituck County. We are so blessed and so thankful for all of your mercies and all of the goodness that you have showered on our county. We ask for your wisdom tonight. We ask that we do your will, not ours, and that we move this county forward. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Jarvis. And our next item is going to be the administer the oath of office, oh, excuse me, yay, yay, yay. is our um, code of ethics. No, it's a, Wait a minute. Right. Uh, Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me get my glasses on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. All right. The next item is going to be our administration of the uh, the oath of the new elected officers, and we're going to have Ray Matusko, um, the clerk to Superior Court, uh, coming up here, and we have three um, commissioners that will be uh, resworn in this evening. So, um, no particular order. I guess I'll. Start on my right, unless somebody wants to go first. In particular, you know what? I'll go first. <laughs> Get out there. I'll go first. I wanted to thank the Board of Commissioners and the County Manager for inviting me out to do this. It's truly an honor to be asked to do this. It's a very solemn occasion when you take your oath of office, and it also means that I won my election also, and I'm still here. And I'm grateful for that. Okay, I've got some family members I'd like to ask if they could come up this evening. Um, I have my my uh, wife, Judy, daughter, Heather, son-in-law, Clinton, and my two grandkids, Clinton and Evelyn. Uh, come on up here and help me with this this evening. Come on up here, we're going to... Rumor has it that it's a very special lady's yeah. birthday today also. Yeah, and what I'd like to announce everybody today is just, you know, let's bring my wife over here. This is my wife, Judy. Today is also her birthday, so we're celebrating that as well. So, this is Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Judy. Happy birthday to you. All right. Well, I'm going to ask if um, uh, Evelyn PT, if you can hold the Bible for me like this morning. Or yep. Can you hold, put your hand up there? If you'll put your... We're going to be doing a little bit of reading and repeating some stuff, so... Okay, if you'll put your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand. Do you, Mike Payment, solemnly and sincerely swear that you'll support the Constitution of the United States and that you'll be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina and to the constitutional powers and authorities which are or may be established for the government thereof and that you'll endeavor to support, maintain, and defend the Constitution of said state, not inconsistent with the Constitution of the United States, to the best of your knowledge and abilities. I hope you got it. I do. And do you, Mike Payment, further solemnly swear that you will and truly execute the duties of the office of Currituck County Commissioner according to the best of your skill and ability and according to law, so I hope you got it. I do. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. taken multiple multiple oaths today. He was sworn in as a deputy sheriff earlier. <laughs> oh. My wife and my granddaughter, Kendall. 
<laughs> All right. If you'll raise your right hand. Do you, Kevin McCord, solemnly and sincerely swear that you'll support the Constitution of the United States and that you'll be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina and to the constitutional powers and authorities which are or may be established for the government thereof, and that you'll endeavor to support, maintain, and defend the Constitution of said state, not inconsistent with the Constitution of the United States, to the best of your knowledge and ability, so help you God. And do you, Kevin McCord, further solemnly swear that you'll well and truly execute the duties of the office of Currituck County Commissioner, according to the best of your skill and ability, and according to law, so help you God. Congratulations. And next, uh, Commissioner Etheridge, you're up. And then we have the, the statesman. <laughs> oh, she's got one. Okay. Oh, we have another special event. I'm bringing my wife Renee and my granddaughter Rose <laughs> and my grandson Oliver, and today is our wedding anniversary. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Happy anniversary. <clears throat> Okay. Do you, J. Owen Etheridge, solemnly and sincerely swear that you'll support the Constitution of the United States and that you'll be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina and to the constitutional powers and authorities which are or may be established for the government thereof and that you'll endeavor to support, maintain, and defend the Constitution of said state not inconsistent with the Constitution of the United States to the best of your knowledge and ability to so help you God? And do you, J. Owen Etheridge, further solemnly swear that you will well and truly execute the duties of the office of Currituck County Commissioner according to the best of your skill and ability and according to law, so help you God. Congratulations. Sir. Thank you. Hmm? You know, Selena said something in her prayer that we want to move the county forward. And uh, I've done this a few times, and every time I've done it, I've always had my children or my grandchildren because it's their future that we're dealing with. Okay. Um, at this time when we have the elections, this, uh, the next item is going to be uh, I'm going to be turning this over in a moment to our county manager for the election of the new uh, chairman to the board. And I just want to state that um, myself, I will not be putting my name in the hat or consideration for another appointment to either vice chair or chair. I've been in this seat or the vice chair seat for almost six years, and I'm going to be uh, just taking a little break from it. I'm going to pass it on to someone else to have the... The good uh, fun of, of doing the chair and vice chair. So um, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our county manager for the election of our board chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the statutes require that the first Monday in December of, of, of an even-numbered year, the board of commissioners shall choose a chair and a vice chair. We've arrived at the time now for the board to select its chairman for the coming year. Are there any nominations for chairman? I'd like to nominate uh, Bob White for the chair. Second. The nomination of Bob White has been made and seconded. Are any, any other nominations? If not, uh, then nominations are closed. All in favor of Commissioner White for chairman, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, no. The ayes have it. Thank you, sir. Um, and at uh, this time, I will uh, open the floor for uh, the vice chair position. Do we have uh, a nomination for that position? Mr. White, Mr. Chairman, <laughs> it's my honor and privilege to nominate my colleague and my friend, Selena Jarvis, to serve as the vice chair of the board. Ms. Jarvis has served since 2019, and she's been a wonderful asset to our board. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Thank you. Any other nominations for the position? 
Seeing none, I will close it and ask for a favor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And at this time, we will recess for about 10 minutes to reset the board and shuffle around for a minute. And uh, then we'll call the meeting back to order. Thank you. All right, good evening, everyone. I'll call this meeting back into order now that we've got everybody back here and reshuffled. Thank you for your patience this evening, and uh, thank you for the uh, nomination to sit in the big seat again. It's been a few years. Mike, uh, you didn't know what you were in for, but uh, thank you for all you've done for this county for six years, it's eight years of service yeah. now, and uh, two years as chairman and were as vice chair, right? Almost four as vice chair. Yeah. Almost. Yep. But wouldn't so. have done it. I mean, do it all over again. It was fun. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. Uh, next item this evening is an approval of the agenda. We haven't got that far yet. So um, can I get a motion for approval? Second. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. Chairman, we, I think oh, we, we want to, uh, to continue one matter uh, under public hearing item A. Upon request of the applicant, due to their attorney's inability to be present tonight. Okay. Well, I was going to deal with that when we got to the hearing item, but uh, we can take care of that now. So. Uh, I, well, I think if you want to approve the agenda, you could do that now. Uh, okay. All right. Then uh, I'll need the you motions withdrawn and amended to reflect. Uh, here it is, right here. Just, uh, I'd like to approve the agenda with one amendment with the removal of the. The uh, Outer Banks Ventures uh, Monterey Shores agenda item for this evening, uh, due to the request by the uh, applicant because their attorney couldn't be present. And I believe the board would want to continue that to December 19th. December 19th. December 19th. Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, next up is our ethics, awareness, and conflict of interest uh, statement. And I believe you have that, Ms. Kitty. Uh, yes, sir. Pursuant to GS 153A-44, a commissioner has a duty to vote on matters coming before the board, but may be excused from voting on issues involving the commissioner's own financial interests, official conduct, or matters on which the commissioner is prohibited from voting under GS 14-234, 153A-3 40 parentheses G or 160A 380A parentheses E parentheses 2 in accordance with Chapter 2 Division 3 of the Curry Tuck County Code of Ordinance it is the duty of every commissioner to avoid both conflict of interest and appearance of conflict does any con any commissioner have any known conflict of interest or appearance of conflict with respect to any matters coming before the board in this meeting, if so, please identify the conflict or appearance of conflict. Any conflicts from the board members? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to the uh, next agenda item this evening, and that is uh, Commissioner's Report. I'll kick that off this evening. Um, I've already thanked Mike. I will again. Do we have public comment? Pub Sorry. Yep, thank you. A little, little rusty. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Former Chairman. <laughs> All right, up next, public comments. Uh, we have Ms. Barbara Snowden signed up this evening. Good evening. My name is Barbara Snowden, and I live at 154 Courthouse Road. Chair, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, congratulations. It's nice to see a female as our uh, second in command in this county. And I acknowledge that. That will be a record say, a record breaking thing that we can record in our history. The reason I'm here tonight is for really two reasons. First thing before I start to talk about that, I would like to publicly thank uh, Samantha Evans for doing the courthouse, decorating the courthouse for us this year. And it looks very nice. The thing I'm here to tell you about is, have you looked outside lately? You look at the white fence here behind you. You look at the white building on the other side. And if you check zoning regulations, 
that's about as much, as much land as you can build a house on here in Curry Tech County. Well, 300 years this year, that property was turned over to the county of Currituck for the purpose of establishing a county seat. That property has been in the hands of the county for 300 years. Uh, some things have changed for the better, and some things have changed for the worst. Next year, the commission, the signing of an actual contract to build the courthouse will be 300 years old. They started building a courthouse on this exact site 300 years March of next year. It was completed in March of the following year. Now, I have not received any instructions from you, even though I've discussed it with the county uh, manager, when y'all want to celebrate having a 300-year-old courthouse. There are not very many courthouses that can say that. Um, it's not this actual building. There have been three courthouses built on this site, but it was somewhere in this area because this has been the only property that Curry Tuck has ever owned for the point of a courthouse. So I'm waiting for your marching orders and what y'all are going to do to march the mark this celebration. The second thing I need to talk to you about is another celebration. We're coming up on the 250th anniversary in celebrating the formation of this country. North Carolina will start celebrating not in 26 when you think of the Declaration of Independence, but North Carolina will start the celebration in 2024. There is a planning committee called uh, North Carolina American 250, and they have started making plans for what they're going to ask each county to do. I'm sitting here looking at two things that you may not realize came out of the bicentennial, but in the bicentennial they ask each county to develop a seal. That's where you got your county seal from. This historical society designed it borrowing a little artwork from another person, putting some circles and date on it and submitted it, and it became the seal. The flag, they ask us all to design a flag for each of the hundred counties. That is the flag that you're using today. I have no idea what they're gonna ask us to do this time. <laughs> but I do want you to know that you can go to the website and you will see the themes that they are emphasizing and you can see what they have started planning to do for North Carolina. As a part of that, I have invited a young lady by the name of Lorraine Umflett. She is a published author uh, of a number of books, but she is on the planning committee for the 250th, North Carolina 250th. And she will be speaking Monday night at 7 o'clock at the Barco Library. I figured we better get a head, little bit of a head start on everybody else and see if we can start planning a little bit early. Uh, Lorraine is a very good speaker, and I think you will enjoy hearing what the 250th Planning Committee has done. And I also think you'll enjoy her topic. The topic of her speech will be North Carolina Revolutionary Before It Was the Thing to Be. That will be at 7 o'clock at the Barco Library, and each one of you are invited. And I, as I said, I wait your instructions on which of those three years you want to celebrate this courthouse. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara, can I ask you a question? <clears throat> Is there any known depiction of what the original courthouses look like? We have um, a, a description, an architectural description. It was made out of cedar. It was... 18 by 20 feet. It was to be an open room with stairs going up and pillars underneath it. And it was to have a judge's bench for the justice of the peace to sit at and benches on the side to, uh, to, for people to come in and sit. Now, I've, I've contacted, I contacted a number of years ago, um, a man in Colonial Williamsburg who is the authority on courthouses 
and I asked him if he could give me a drawing of what he thought the courthouse looked like. And he said he did not really think there was enough um, information in the contract to say absolutely. But he said it was a one-story building. It had uh, at least two windows, a front door, and you came in directly and turned and went into the court area. And it was made out of uh, good cypress wood was the structure. But the the contractor did not follow the instructions exactly, and he got sued. And Mrs. Umflett will be coming back in two years to talk about that court case because she's a descendant of Robert Payton, who was the contractor who the, the Justice of the Peace Justice of the Peace sued for not building the courthouse exactly correct. I have a, as I said, I do have a pencil sketch, but. I'm not going to stand on the authenticity of that sketch being exactly correct. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it would be interesting to see it. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I have no one else signed up for public comment this evening. Is there anyone else that would like to speak that did not sign up? All right, seeing no one, I will uh, close the public comments. Now we'll move on to... Uh, Commissioner report. I'll try again. <clears throat> um, once again, Mike, thanks for uh, for the last couple of years. It's a uh, it's a it's a lot of work. A lot of people don't know that know that or realize it until you get into it and realize what you signed up for was not what you thought it was. And uh, so it's a lot of work to do. So thank you again for that. Um, thank you to the Board of Commissioners again for trusting me uh, in this position, and uh, and to Ms. Selena for uh, stepping up to the plate. And moving into the vice chair position, um, as Kitty said uh, and articulated very well, I think she'll make a great uh, vice chair and hopefully in the very near future uh, chair this, this board of commissioners for this county. And uh, we just have to talk her into it, making it a reality someday. Um, the board of commissioners uh, just finished uh, two work sessions this evening, and uh, one of them is near and dear to my heart. The first item on our, our work session was... Uh, we're calling it a community calendar, but it's it's a website dedicated to um, Kurtuck County mainland businesses. The Outer Banks is, is well covered through our visitor center, and so we're working through that now um, as, as possibly something to do to have one place for all the mainland businesses to be listed if they're Kurtuck County-based uh, businesses, and um, in, a, in a community calendar where you can go and find what's going on in your part of the county without having to go to 12 different Facebook pages, Snapchat, Twitter, whatever your social media is to, to do this. It's also a way that the county government can reach out and put more information out, another tool for us to use that. Um, and it won't be exclusively for uh, businesses. You know, there's, there's charitable organizations that can be involved in this, be it a church or our school system as well. So um, it, it was a, it was a Good discussion was had on this, and we're going to take this up again at our next meeting in December. And so um, I just wanted to put that out there that, that we are thinking about it. We caught some flack when we decided not to do um, economic development and move forward, and, and this was in the back of our thought process at that time, and we are now moving forward um, through this process of what economic development or some of the tools that may be available for businesses looks like in the future of this county. Um, the other one was uh, fire readiness, and we're going to have more discussion on that in the coming weeks, um, just uh, looking to the future. I think Owen said it earlier, the, the kids are our future, and we have to provide for them and make sure that we've set them on a good path. Uh, and with that, I will uh, kick it over to uh, Commissioner Owen Etheridge, who is on his seventh time Six. as a commissioner. Sixth. And I, I feel like I should crack a joke before Kevin gets in there about, uh, but you're, no, <laughs> all right. I'll, I'll let it slide tonight, but uh, please go ahead, Mr. Etheridge. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I attended the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners Legislative Gold Conference three weeks ago, and there are some goals in there that if they can be realized will be a bit big benefit to Currituck County and our citizens. In that light, as some of you might have seen, the Department of Commerce's tier status came out last week and 
Currituck is the highest ranked county in the state of North Carolina. And we don't necessarily, at least I don't agree with that. I take exception to that report because I don't understand how Currituck can be a Tier 3 and dare a Tier 2. Mm -hmm. um, I went to the Curry Shuck down at Sanctuary Vineyards, and that was a great event because there was a lot of people from all over eastern North Carolina and southeastern Virginia there, and uh, hats off to Sanctuary Vineyards for putting that on. And lastly, the parade Friday night, we had a, the commissioners had a float, and believe it or not, nobody threw anything at us. <laughs> no, nothing spirit. like that. And uh, it, was a, it was great to see all the children, both adult children and little children, as we went by and candy was being dispersed. And it really gave me a nostalgic look back at how community is supposed to be and what it should be. And I want to commend uh, my fellow commissioner, Kevin McCord, because he put a lot of time and effort in that thing. And uh, the boy hustled, and he did a great job. 80, I think it was 80 units. It was a little over 80. This year, last year was 70-something. And people were astonished uh, that little old Curry Tuck could pull something off like that. But hats off to you, Kevin. Thank you. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Commissioner McCord. Uh, first, I would like to thank, I guess, the citizens who put me back in the seat for four years. Uh, my mental health check came back fine to run again, <laughs> so we're good. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, reference the Christmas parade. It was a success, and I'm glad. And it's not. It wasn't just me. Um, Cooperative Extension um, staff, uh, Cameron Lowe and her staff, as well as with the FOP, put that together. And it was the 29th when it grows every year. Uh, the two ladies that helped me, they worked 12 hours from 9 to 9. Um, Sheila Gregory and Ella Skinner, who both work for Cameron Lowe, they are rock stars. And they love it. They love being out there. They love helping. Uh, they did really, really good. Um, the sheriff is in the back of the room. And I, when you when you want to thank people and you're always going to forget somebody's name, I literally was like trying to write, and he, I've heard that speech before. Um, but I'm going to try it anyway. Uh, Chief Deputy Jeff Walker helped out. Uh, with one of our floats as well as this is the first year we've ever had to help and direct traffic to get them out of the facility there's over a thousand cars on the property it was crazy it was so busy uh, sergeant jesse taylor sergeant will davis deputy pete odom um, one of our sro's deputy large uh, region rents sean and daniel jennings donated a light trailer that's one of our biggest thing is safety and having enough lighting um, and and he did that uh, local resident now uh, one of our deputies as well has a business, Odom's Lawn Care, donated one of the other light trailers. Johnny Messina donated stakes for marking all the different spots. The uh, Parks and Rec, Jason Weeks and his team, as far as getting the tree set up and all that stuff, as well as uh, those guys The next over the after the weekend, as far as cleaning up some of the trash. Um, this year I had Matt Mullins and the Boy Scouts help with the trash which was um, somebody made a comment that they needed some community service hours, and I said, we, we, got, it. we got some for them. But those guys did awesome. Matt Mullins um, runs the uh, bus garage and the uh, mm -hmm. runs everything as far as the maintenance for the uh, county, and uh, his group of Boy Scouts were awesome. Um, the sheriff's office, we did use some of our equipment, obviously for the parade, for the citizens. Um, I'd like to thank the sheriff for that. Um, William Nelson, our airport director, is a machine. That guy is, mm -hmm. is just awesome. And had it not been for some of his input and stuff, and we've already started talking about for next year for the same same groups of everybody, but he really helped. He was there with his new baby and his wife to watch the parade and opened up some gates and some additional stuff, and we had some additional area because it's getting where that area is not big enough. But uh, William came up with some good ideas, and we brainstormed. So I'd like to thank him. Um, that was huge. Um, my wife, I got home pretty late that night um, from after it. But like I said, it's for the citizens, it's for the kids. The floats this year, were they were crazy. I mean, they were so good, some of the floats that were in the parade. They, I mean, people really went out, spent some money, spent some time. And um, this was the biggest. It was double what we typically had for people who entered to win a trophy. I mean, you know, it's like... We usually have four or five people, and we buy like three trophies. This year, I think we had 12 or 13 people in for the trophies. So, um, and I believe Sheila's going to send those results out to everybody tomorrow, too. 
that's it on the parade. And like I said, if it's not for those two ladies, Sheila and Ella Skinner, they are just 12 hours, both of them put. They're great county employees. I mean, they do tons of stuff. That building is professionally ran. Don't put a table back out of order because camera will, will find you. Um, but they do a really, really good job. Last thing, Operation Santa. Uh, if you can donate, if you have a business and you want to write off the FOP, uh, we don't do shop with a cop. COVID kind of ended that, so it's like shop for a kid. But um, the FOP or DSS, all the money's combined together. So, like, if you donate to DSS or you donate to the FOP, it's, it's the same group of kids. So if you have a business and you want to donate, we've had some huge, huge donations from local businesses and stuff, which is really awesome. That just shows because some people's children might not be as, as, as well off to be able to receive Christmas. So, but that's it for me. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Beaumont. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so we're entering the Christmas season, which it evidently comes right after or mid-October, I think is what it's <laughs> running right now. Um, and uh, uh, I have a, the annual pilgrimage of uh, taking the children and grandchildren to go shopping for my wife. And uh, we've only been doing it for about 30 years now, so we've almost gotten it down pat um it is crazy out there right now and it's it's crazy from a parking perspective it's crazy from the way people are driving it you know i a couple a couple of things right and this also kind of touches on uh, the death of of uh, will craddock you'd never have a guarantee about tomorrow and this is a time that um we need to focus on our families and, you know, give your kids hugs, give your wife hugs, give your significant other hugs. You never know. And uh, um, along those lines, um, I, I work for a defense contractor, and our entity on base Navy Norfolk just had its fourth suicide in about the last six weeks. You know, Holiday seasons bring lots of time of joy, but it also brings a lot of time of depression and sadness. I would encourage everyone to also be attuned to who you work with and, you know, trying to be sensitive to what they're going through. Um, no one wants to come in on Monday and find out their coworker didn't make it over the weekend. Um, so it's a great time of joy. It's an important time to focus on what's important, right? Uh, you know, the classic Jesus is the reason for the season, you know, keep that in perspective. It's not about what's bigger, what's flashier, what's whatever, you know, family, what's important. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Mr. Jarvis. Thank you. First, I want to say thank you to the board for your confidence in me. I hope I don't let you down and I'm going to do my best to be vice chair. Um, I want to thank Mike for his leadership over the last two years. Uh, you've been a mentor to me and a friend, and I appreciate that. And Kitty, thank you for your confidence in me. Um, I also want to say thank you to Kevin and all the people that made the Christmas parade possible. Uh, it did take a lot of people to do it, but every program, every um, event needs a cheerleader. and. That guy right there is the best cheerleader for the Christmas parade that anyone could have. He's been talking about that Christmas parade uh, since October, I think, was the first plug. Maybe September. Uh, so uh, thank you for your work and for the extension and all the people that made it happen. It was a great event. And then <clears throat> I just want to say that it is the Christmas season. It is Advent. Um, and it is a, a time to... Um, reflect on all the things that Christmas means. And um, a beautiful lady that goes to my church, Sheila Grandy, uh, once put uh, Christmas in perspective this way, that you celebrate it with joy. Uh, you put Jesus first, others second, and then yourself third. And that's how you truly gain the joy of the season. So it is my hope that people will embrace that joy and really uh, think of others uh, and the reason for the season. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Kitty. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to congratulate our chairman and our Ms. Vice Chairman, and I look forward to working with both of y'all as you lead Curry Tuck in the next years. 
On November the 8th, the state of North Carolina held their general election, and congratulations to Currituck County State Senator Bobby Hannock, to the clerk of court, to our sheriff, to my fellow board members who were reelected, to the Board of Education newly elected board members and the Soil and Water District Supervisors. On election night and for the next couple of days, I spoke with my f friend, Will Croddick, several times, and this guy was already adding up the numbers. He said, can you believe if you add the top two opponents' numbers, I still would have beat them? No one in the state of North Carolina could have been more excited about their victory than Will, but he would always tell me it wasn't about him, it was about the kids. Will's obituary stated, and I quote, Will Croddick was one of a kind is an understatement. Will's booming presence, his actions, his energy, and his devotion to the people and causes he loved will forever be missed and remembered, end of quote. The voters of Currituck County spoke loud and clear as to the direction they wanted the Board of Education to go in. December the 23rd will be Will Croddick's birthday. And what a better way to celebrate his life and remember Will Croddick than to ask the Board of Education to appoint Emily Croddick to accomplish her husband's visions for Currituck County. Emily, Will, and Andrew, may God grant you comfort. When you're feeling sad, may sweet memories bring a smile to your face. And to my dear friend Will Croddick, happy birthday. And yes, you were one of a kind. Rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Payne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first, I do, do want to send congratulations to Commissioner Etheridge and McCord and all the elected officials and to our sheriff. Congratulations on, on the reelection there. And I know this county appreciates everything you do. Um, the, I'm looking forward to working with this board again. Um, we've got a lot of things to work on. We've, we've worked a lot of hard issues and, and um, come together. And, you know, even if we disagreed on certain things, we still worked through it and we made our decisions and voted and, and moved on with it. And I thank you all for, for um, working like that as a team together. I do want to congratulate uh, Com uh, Chairman White now. And I'm really excited and proud to see uh, Commissioner Jarvis stepping up to the vice chair position there. It's exciting times in Currituck. Um, and as far as the chairman position, Commissioner White's right. It, you do have to have um, extra time to come to extra meetings and do certain things and get meetings together. And it was fun. I, I don't regret it. I enjoyed it. I'd do it again. It was a great time. Um, great team working with up here and, and our um, county attorney and county manager. Um, thank you for everything. It's been good. Look forward to, to still continuing on. Um, and as far as the uh, the uh, Christmas parade, I just want to thank um, Commissioner Etheridge to make sure, making sure that the commissioners there had the proper lighting attire to wear <laughs> during the parade. You're <laughs> because <laughs> we had nice lights all strung around us as we threw out the candy. So thank you for that. Um, it was a good time, and I've only heard scuttlebutt that um, there's going to be more floats. It's going to be bigger, so. You know, Commissioner McCord, you better find a longer route because we're going to need it next year, it sounds like. We're going to have to, yeah. so. Um, but that was a very good time. And, um, again, just um, looking for, you know, remember your neighbors and, and fellow people out there during the holiday season. There's a lot of people in need. A lot of people are going to be going through hard times and depressed. You know, try to look out what you can and, and remember them and remember the ones that aren't with us anymore. And, Family is important, and, and it was stated earlier, make sure you hug and say you love your family members and your fellow friends out there because you just never know. Um, with that, I'll go ahead, and uh, that will be my um, comments for this evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, I would like to thank the other Mr. Etheridge for getting the float for us and for letting you, uh, yes. for you letting us use your Happy to do it. Sorry, your, I wasn't your ride. <laughs> it was. It would have been better to be there than the meeting I was at. I can tell you that over the weekend. So uh, sorry I missed that one. All right. Uh, next up, we have the uh, county manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Uh, about 8:20 Saturday morning, I received a message from. Commissioner McCord in his other capacity as a law enforcement officer 
that we had a large sailboat that washed up on the beach in Corova with a man and his cat on board. Um, and as Commissioner McCord mentioned, uh, other county employees who Friday night did great work. Saturday, there should be employees recognized as well. I don't know what law enforcement officers were there. I do understand COVID. Uh, COVID. <laughs> Corova. <laughs> yeah, well, Corova Volunteer Fire Department was uh, was on the scene. Um, and then I also called uh, Mary Beth Noons, our emergency management director, and uh, asked her to uh, inform the uh, federal and other state agencies that may need to be informed about this incident. Um, there were about, what, 150 gallons of fuel on board that needed to be unloaded from the sailboat to prevent any kind of spill from occurring. Um, I didn't expect Mary Beth to do this, but she evidently drove over there immediately and spent the entire day on the beach coordinating and making sure that everything was handled properly and appropriately. And I understand that by Sunday the fuel had been safely uh, removed from the from the vessel and uh, it had been removed from the beach, I believe. Isn't that correct? Zero, zero pollution. Yeah. So another shout-out to, to great county employees who, in fact, when I talked to Mary Beth, she was in her car, I'm sure, had other plans for Saturday, and she immediately stopped and and, uh, and acted on behalf of the people of Curry Tuck County. So thank you to her. Um, Ms. Snowden coming forward about the historic courthouse uh, brings to mind that uh, last week, uh, Assistant County Manager Rebecca Gay and I met with uh, our consulting engineers who since we've started noticing that there are leaks developing certainly in this room above windows and elsewhere in the courthouse, that we ought to have a structural analysis of this uh, building to, to see uh, what kind of condition it's in and what kind of love it might need. Um, I think it's fair to say that the result is that, that structurally it is in sound condition, uh, but it needs some love. There's, there's a lot of water and moisture that is penetrating into this building. Mm -hmm. uh, the windows throughout the, this building and the additions uh, are failing. Um, there's a lot of moisture coming in through the, the bricks. Um, there's also they're going to the next step will be determine what kind of coating was placed upon the bricks um, back in the, I guess maybe the 90s uh, because that's causing some problem and you see the salt that's forming on the outside of the bricks that's the white that's that's now showing up on the building uh, so the next step is going to be for them to identify what the coating is and what is required to remove that coating so the bricks can basically breathe and allow for moisture to to move in and out of the bricks as they are intended um, and then also to develop for us a program for replacing of all the windows um, throughout this facility and repointing uh, most if not all of the mortar certainly in the historical section of the building so that will be coming to you in the next number of months of what we need to do to make sure that this building will last for another couple hundred hundred years under the care of others all right <laughs> Um, also, uh, still be here. <laughs> uh, the county uh, county employee holiday luncheon will be December 22nd, Thursday, December 22nd at 12 o'clock noon. Um, it has been the tradition in the past that the Board of Commissioners has granted employees the re remainder of the day after that event. And so I asked uh, for you to give me direction as to whether you will consider continue uh, that practice. And then secondly, um, there, I guess there's been some talk about whether to cancel uh, uh, um, the January 3rd meeting. Uh, there are effectively four, uh, I guess, business days the way that Christmas falls this year to be able to prepare an agenda package and get it to you all for a January 3rd meeting. So I understand there may be some consideration that we uh, would cancel the January 3rd meeting, which is a day after New Year's Day when the offices are closed. Um, but I, again, I look to the board for direction as to what your pleasure is. All right, so we got two things we need to deal with the uh, January 3rd meeting. Is there any opposition to canceling that meeting? We don't have much on the on the books for that. All right. In agreement. I think, I think we're good I'll take there. That as a consensus. All right. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And then uh, the employee luncheon. You just need a general consensus on that, right? Yes. So does anyone have any problem with continuing our normal process of allowing the staff to leave after the employee luncheon? Absolutely not. Not a bit. Okay. We're good there. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. All right. County Attorney's Report. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Depositions are being held this week in the campground, the federal case, 
by the campgrounds mm -hmm. attorney he is deposing all county employees that were involved with that case so those are taking place every day monday through friday over the extension and i am accompanying nick herman who is our outside counsel for that case um, for each of those depositions and then also one more thing the we're having a board of adjustment meeting this thursday the variance application that was going to be heard the last meeting got continued to this thursday so hopefully we will finally hear that case okay that's all thank you all right next item is uh, administrative reports item a united states air force cycling team memorial to memorial inaugural event we have chief master sergeant jack mccombs uh, u.s air force retired here to present to us Good evening sir uh, mr chairman and fellow commissioners it's a joy for me literally to be here uh, i live in kill double hills i've done that since 1997 I spent uh, many years overseas and multiple places in the United States. When I knew I was going to retire from my second job, I started uh, touring the East Coast of the United States and decided I wanted to live in North Carolina. And I've never regretted that. Um, You're up. Uh, late last year, uh, I learned that the Air Force cycling team was proposing to make a big bicycle ride from the Wright Memorial in Kill Devil Hills to the U.S. Air Force Memorial in Arlington, Virginia. And I held up my hand and said, uh, if you need some local help, I'd be happy to do that because I ride a bicycle. I started as a young man of 65 in... 2005 and I've ridden about 45,000 miles mostly in Dare County and Currituck County I have ridden on 158 many many times uh, they were happy to to have somebody with local knowledge and also an experienced cyclist uh, so I started to contact various uh, jurisdictions uh, starting with the Park Service and Kill Devil Hills, Kitty Hawk, Currituck County. Commissioner Lieutenant McCord uh, was my point of contact here and the city of Chesapeake. Uh, the cycling team was formed in 1995. This is not a fly-by-night outfit. This is a really professional organization and you can check their, I have their website there, and they have a really nice uh, uh, history, where they ride at, why they ride. Generally, it's a fundraiser. Uh, uh, they came up with this idea of the memorial to the memorial ride, and they wanted to make it similar and actually, absolutely replicate what rugby is and I'll get into that in a few minutes uh, it's going to be held every September uh, this year was the inaugural ride uh, there were about a hundred uh, in the ride the total ride 65 started from the Wright Memorial and went to Chesapeake they raised about ten thousand dollars for the wounded uh, airmen program we have a lot of uh, airmen that have been injured uh, as well as their families too since these perpetual wars that we have been in since 2001. Um, my first contact as I said was uh, with Lieutenant McCord and the guy that the action officer was Corporal Tom Voris uh, sitting back here and I'm going to pull him up here in a in a minute or so. He, like me, is a career military person. I'm sure that the Marines were sad to, for him to go, but I think Tukurta County is very pleased to have him with them. Uh, 2023, 
It's going to be held between 7 and 10 September. 7 September is when they'll be coming through uh, Currituck County. And they're going to open it to cyclists, both military and non-military. It's going to be uh, patterned after rugby. And I'm going to get into a few details like that, what rugby is about. Uh, Rugby is the oldest, largest, and longest multi-day cycling event in the world. Uh, it gets tremendous media coverage, uh, all types of media, and it has a large number of celebrities that join into the, uh, the ride. They have over 20,000 cyclists participating in this, and they ride across Ohio over eight days. They only allow 8,500 to ride the whole eight days. Uh, the rest of them are allowed to ride one, two, or three uh, days. Uh, now, this is where it gets interesting. The state of Iowa gains about $25 million in revenue, economic improvement. Uh, the start location in each overnight location is three to five million dollars. Now, M2M planning, uh, we have to work very closely for all the jurisdictions that lie between the Wright Memorial and Arlington, Virginia. Uh, we have to learn how to, together, each of these jurisdictions and M2M man, uh, management, how to safely uh, manage this number of cyclists on the public roads. Now, the M2M management is well aware that this, there are some dangers associated with ha having a lot of cyclists on public roads. So they're very deliberately damping down the number of people that they'll allow, they'll allow to ride. Uh, we think, uh, with the forecast that M2M has done, that uh, this next year we'll have about uh, a 15,000 to 20,000 uh, economic uh, impact on the state and communities that it rides through. By 2029, we expect uh, a $1 million economic impact and in 2033, three to five million. Now there are some uncertainties about this. Ragby is always held in July. The children are not in school in July. That frees up a lot of people to ride. Uh, M2M is always going to be on the Air Force's birthday, which is September. Uh, in Iowa, eventually the numbers of cyclists uh, climbed to around 10,000, and the, uh, the state then, working with local jurisdictions, actually closed the roads off and let these cyclists, 20, uh, cyclists go through in waves so that one wave would go through, opening up the road, another wave would go through. Uh, that's TB Day uh, for North Carolina and Virginia. This was the uh, group photograph taken uh, in front of the Wright Memorial. Right in the middle of the picture, front row, is the recently retired Air Force Chief of Staff, a four-star four general. Uh, he actually rode the whole uh, route from Wright Memorial to Arlington. And before he started, I'm a Chief Master Sergeant enlisted I told the general, I leaned over and whispered in his ear, I am watching you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I was concerned to hear some man in his mid-60s, uh, uh, but he bruised, breezed through it, and he just sent me an email today and said he's go also going to do it next year. And at this time, I'd like uh, Corporal Voorhees to come up.
This is a photograph of the group, and I'm hoping long after we've already we've left the stage, <laughs> this photograph will be displayed displayed in the uh, sheriff's office. Uh, Corporal, he personally escorted the small group that, including the uh, chief of staff, throughout uh, Currituck County. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Corporal. All right. Thank, you. Yes, sir. All right, thank, you. thank you very much, and Merry Christmas to you all. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Uh, next item is uh, item B, presentation of the curbside collection survey results. And uh, I guess we'll have Ms. Rebecca back in front of us again. Yes, sir. All right, so staff came to you back in September and made a recommendation to move toward curbside collection within Moyoc uh, to address the high volume of traffic that we're seeing in the Moyoc convenience site. And you all directed staff then to conduct a survey within the Moyoc Township with the exception of Gibbs Woods to gauge interest of citizens in curbside collection. Um, we have received the results of that survey and we had a wonderful response. Um, we, we sent out a postcard mailer to uh, just shy of 4,000 households, and we received a total of 1,017 responses. Um, we determined that there were 919 valid surveys, so we had a response rate of about 26%, which we were very pleased with. Uh, some, some were duplicates, some were commercial uh, entities that, that we had to remove, and some were respondents outside of the survey area. Um, so we asked how uh, members of the community currently dispose of their household trash and recycling. And you can see the results here. We were actually surprised that so many folks are already using curbside collection within that community. Um, we also asked how satisfied folks are with the existing convenience site and found that almost 75% said that they were satisfied essentially with the service that they're currently receiving. Um, overwhelmingly, Bay Disposal is the service provider within Moyoc Township. Um, and then we asked if, if we do move forward with curbside collection for household trash and recycling, if folks would still continue to use the Moyot convenience site for um, disposal. And I'm not sure if this is a, a totally accurate response to these questions. I'm not sure if folks were saying that they would continue to uh, drop off vegetative waste or, or bulk waste. This, this seems high. So um, this was an interesting response at, at 571. Uh, over half of the respondents said that they would still continue to use the convenience site. I'd well, I mean, I would think that because, I mean, you still got a lot of bulk items. Yeah, I, I still do. In Kerala, I still take my stuff up to Corova once right. in a while. We would yeah. expect that. We would expect yeah. that. But the uh, question was specifically for trash and, and recycling. Uh, well, some people might not distinguish. I, I think that's probably trash happened. is trash. Yeah. Right. Bulk items. Would right. you still continue? Right. right. I, I think that's what happened. Um, and then the final question that we asked was if folks are uh, in favor of a county operated weekly collection it if the cost additional cost was 15 to 20 dollars a month so we had 500 folks uh, that indicated yes that they were in favor of that and 416 were not Rebecca did you say earlier that you, <clears throat> there's a way to decipher if those came from specific neighborhoods or if it was just the general population or we could we could go back and look at because I'd be curious if the, if the ones that lived in some of the newer <clears throat> developments are probably are the yeses, and uh, I'd be curious what that. Uh, some of the some of the ones too, Rebecca, and we talked about this. Some of the ones, like Rivers Edge, I believe it's included in their monthly dues. Mm -hmm. um, Eagle Creek, I believe it's included in their monthly dues. So that's four twenty. That's almost six hundred homeowners right there. That that's already included. Those are only the two of that I know. That it's included in their their dues. Mm -hmm. One because I used to live in one, and the other one I just because I knew. Mm -hmm. 
So staff's recommendation is still uh, to, to move forward with curbside collection within Moyak Township as a pilot program, but we'll look to the board for direction. So if we do this, uh, if we didn't do this, there was still going to be an additional cost to deal with the the convenience sites, right? I mean, we were looking at a significant infrastructure improvements at one or two of those sites as it is, right? That's correct, And yes. there was going to be a, a cost, a, a, it was still going to raise rates. Do you remember what you told us it was? I'll talk, like, we didn't really have a defined number at that point, right? It was uh, just an estimate of repairs. I don't think we would. Several years ago, we received an estimate, I think, in the $3 million range to mm -hmm. expand the Moyak convenience site. To expand site. the one of Panther Landing, and then, of course, as Moyak has grown, it, it, I think the county would need to be looking for another site on the other side of, western side of Moyak, most likely, mm -hmm. for the development of a similar convenience center if we stay with that system. Right at the new school. <laughs> Got 30 acres there. Yeah, but aren't we, even if we do the curbside, we're still going to have to do improvements with a little bit of expense <clears throat> We probably would change what's there, right? You could take a compactor out, for instance, and put another bulk container right. in because you're not going to do as much. Would this kick this down the road? Well, would this kick the need for a second convenience site um, down the road? Or are those improvements going to happen regardless on a timeline? If we went ahead and implemented curbside, that, that would delay some of those. Okay. Well, at the current site, we would... I would suggest we have an ingress and egress difference than what we've got now. Is it one? Make, is it one way in right now? Yeah, one, one way in, yes. one way out. Need a, need a in and out. Well, don't we own? Don't didn't we? Abuts. Don't we own a, a couple acres right there that abuts to it? Ten, ten acres. Yes, we have, we have additional property there to be able to expand the the facility. Now, the fifteen to twenty dollar range that we use. How many was that predicated on? How many users? Uh, I think that was just a general mm -hmm. estimate and the additional cost. At, well, let's see. I'm trying to think back. If there was a difference between when we looked at the entire Moyak Township or just the smaller area. Would it be from like Guinea Road North or something? Because I have a Mayock zip code, but I live in Crawford. Right, that's right. Which I, I do pay for the bridge. Have we kind of addressing the amount of room that's at Panther Landing and kind of a different approach to get rid of the compactors and add bulk? I'm curious if one of the largest detractors of using our bulk whatever dump off to me is you got until noon on Saturday and it's not open on Sunday at all. Open on Sunday. I don't no, it's just no. Saturday till May. So if you've got bulk, I mean, and it's it's about as easy as it gets backing up, shoving it out of the truck, and then driving oh, I, away. I agree. I'm suggested that. I, yeah. I'm curious if that's another aspect of the solution, right? Is to expand the hours there because it's typically, I think, two people working there at the same time, if not just one, and they, they're driving a backhoe and basically clearing the deck. Let me just tell you one thing about that deck, though. It's a nasty. Yeah, I man. would. I every time you walk in that thing with your shoes, just get if you got carpet or something in your, mm -mm. that stink will stay with you for. I don't Ever. even want to get out of that place and There's and walk and shove it. I mean, I know what you're saying, but I stay away from. I dump it as far as I can for the compact to push it because we had talked about one time are we doing something up there, because walking on that platform. Well, that it's, is well, awful. but yeah. but that. Okay, but hosing it off, you know, every hour, uh, all I'm saying is, you know, you can get rid of a lot of material awfully fast there. And well, that's a, that's another just another issue. Yeah. So, and, I, and I brought it up, you know, it, at Chesterfield, when I lived up there, we went to one, and they had probably six or eight of the, um, the larger, like the recycling size cans that they hauled steel off in. And that was you, you drove up to it and you threw your stuff down into it, right? And it wasn't a tipping floor. It was for residential disposal. Convenience so you came site. in, Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the trash side of it, they actually had dumpsters set up for regular residential household trash. But your bulk items, you backed up to a guardrail, threw your stuff down in a container, and they could just pull it off. It was already on the back of a, a, a you know, a 10-wheeler or whatever. So that's something that would be 
amazing to have, um, but you gotta you gotta bring in a lot of dirt. You gotta completely rearrange the site. Um, it's probably easier to do over at the Maple Transfer Station for sure. Well, it's already it's, set up that way. <clears throat> well, it, but the tipping floor doesn't work. You need another area for residential bulk disposal there of that type if that's what you want to offer. The, the, <clears throat> some of the biggest challenges at the convenience sites, typically to me, it is the bulk. The bulk fills up. Yeah. And they, you know, and they're stuck. They can't get it out of there. You know, they're waiting on the trucks to come in and, right. and haul it out of there. Just, you know, throwing it out there is another potential avenue where maybe we keep more compactors, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway. Um, oh, and back in um, September on the 19th when we had our work session, um, the number they gave us was um, right at 3500 and the cost would be $19 per month for each of those. So, but tonight the question is, do we want to go forward with curbside service, provide a higher level of service, there is a cost of that to the end user, and um, and then prolong the life, I guess, of our convenience sites or, or the amount of money that's going to be spent on them because it's going to require an increase in fees either way. Well, the only thing about going to curbside service i've had some people quite a few people tell me they were not going to pay it they'd go keep going to the convenience site right so we'd have to develop a policy well how do you address that i think mm -hmm. are you going to foreclose on somebody because they won't pay yeah, the trash but bill? i thought we said if we did that we had to have a certain amount of um, to make it feasible correct or am i wrong with that you can't just have 200 people doing it no, I, I don't think it would no, be. No, this would be. This would be. We're, no, we're it, doing it. It's, not, it's not an option for you. It's got to be a whole neighborhood or not. Yeah. I, I mean, you can't try to figure out like a paper route who's getting it. You're out of Eagle Creek because they've got a, like a five year contract and they just recently signed. And that's include that is including their HM Rivers Edge, which that's not in the, the part of it. But yeah, like I said, how I mean, does that we didn't factor the Eagle Creek in, correct? They were included. They were within included the in survey. it. Yes. See, you will, you won't have a trash company won't come in unless they're guaranteed a certain amount of business. If we're correct, well, we would have the, to competitively bid the contract. Right, yes. and it may be the same provider that's providing for Eagle Creek, and then it becomes a moot point. Exactly. You know, they they just change their fee structure internally in the neighborhood, and someone else is picking up the, the same person is picking up the trash. They don't notice a difference one way or the other. So that it's not going to be without its uh, pitfalls. The first. Yeah, you're going to have to develop the policies up front. Yeah, and know what I would think do. so. But just you can't decide you're not going to pay uh, the fire tax that's embedded in our taxes. You can't decide you're not going to pay uh, your tax for anything else. With the cost of fuel, if it was 18 or $19 a month, you're going to spend that if you live off a of backwoods road to ride to the wayside easily in a couple trips. I mean, I'm just saying I, I understand somebody on a fixed budget or whatever that could be. But like you said, if you're doing yeah. that a couple times a week, if you go to the month. dump once a week, I mean yeah. four times a month, you're going to spend six dollars in fuel. Yeah, but what what now? What some people have already told me is, look, our our uh, tax or our trash fees have already went up uh, on our tax bill, and I'm already paying it. Why have I got to pay more now for curbside? They said it should be included for the fee I'm paying. Well, the costs are going up. Well, they well, keep going up. Fees, yeah, but, go but up see, I, me fuel and Randy, I won't be paying that additional fee for curbside pickup. Right. But the other folks will be paying the same on their tax bill plus an additional. Well, they're curbside. getting a higher level of service. No different than I do in Whalehead. I have pickup curbside. I pay for rollout service there because the tourists don't pay it to take it out. But um, they're they're getting a higher level of service than you do unless you have you know pickup curbside at your at your house. But that is something you would choose to do individually, right? So at the end of the day, the the whole point of this exercise is that we were going to spend a, a lot of money in our recycle centers, especially at Panther Landing, and fees were still going to have to go up. Because we can't we can't absorb that that extra infrastructure repair change whatever at our current fee schedule. So either way, it was going up. And that site, remember, we changed hours for it because it's so crowded. The amount of trash and debris that's coming out of people's cars driving up down the road hopefully will be lessened. 
So you've got you've, there's there's other factors to it that are actually positives, just just in that. I mean, I we've all seen it stuff blowing out of somebody's truck on the way to wherever. It's just junk blowing out all over the place, especially when they cut the the ditch along the railroad up there. My uh, that really comes out. So that's that's another positive, if you will, of doing something like this. I, I will. And I probably shouldn't say this, but I will say our waste uh, companies are some of our. I mean, but they do have covers over top of their things, but they are some. They blow out, I, blow they blow out, out left, right. and they're just as bad as some I, of the I trucks. No that's, offense to Beta Spose or any of the other ones. Twenty-five an hour. True. Then, right? True. So, uh, so anyway, so you need us to give you a thumbs up or down, basically. Ready for some direction. Okay. So. Uh, well, I mean, I, I would, I mean, the comment that Commissioner Etheridge had mentioned earlier about policies, I mean, are we, do we want to see some policies maybe written first before we say move forward, or we want to say now and then write the consequences after the fact? Oh, no, we, we definitely, I think we're going to have to come up with that as part of this whole thing. If we go forward with this, obviously, I, we're going to have to, we're going to have to, have this presented to us for adoption as part of okay, so, all of it, right? Okay, so, so the next step then would be to develop, move forward, develop some criteria and collections and and rates and all that stuff to bring before us to adopt. Is that what you're saying? Well, we, they still have to go out for a bid. So that process is going to take a couple months right. just to get just to get the bids in, And then right? see what the, okay. And we'll know what the... Maybe some, some ordinance, mo ordinance modifications. Well, we keep growing. We've got to give services. So that's what happens when right. we... If we only had those one-acre lots. That's right. We would be good. We'd be a lot better off than we are today, so, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> they have less stops. Certainly <laughs> an opinion. All right. Farm equipment moving down the road with trash cans. Traffic problems. So what is the board's pleasure? Uh, we're uh, we're going to need uh, a motion on this item to uh, move forward uh, or not um, to get staff kick in the gear. You want a motion? If you're willing to make one, fire Mine, it up. Mine's actually for the other way. <laughs> My motion would be to, uh, to not approve it. Um, hold on, let me grab the sheet. There, uh, we don't have a sheet Either go that. forward or don't go forward. I, I would say I would say don't go forward. We own 11 acres right there beside it, and I know it costs money, you know. And then everybody equally pays their share if they want to pay for the convenience. I mean, I own multiple trucks, and I pay for trash pickup. My wife likes it, and I might take a bag a week to maybe if that. But okay. I would say no. I mean, like I said, if somebody wants it, they can pay to get their own service. Or if their neighborhood wants it, like a Eagle Creek or a River's Edge, that it's included in their their fees. And, and I mean, like I said, we own the eleven acres. Um, okay. That's just that my a, opinion. Is that a motion? I guess uh, that is guess. that is a, that is a negative motion. Uh, I have a negative motion, and just well, I, I'll second it, Kevin, because I, I agree. I think uh, I know down my way, a lot of people pay for it. Um, I think it's problematic with contracts already in place for some of our bigger neighborhoods or one of our bigger, biggest neighborhoods. Um, and I just, uh, I don't know. I, I, I feel like with it almost evenly split that there's not an overwhelming demand that something be done right now. I mean, if it, if it was a bigger margin, I would think that there's a demand for it, but I can't. I can't see that. Okay. Any further discussion? I do. I, w I do, too. Please. I want to know the difference, because we're going to have to do something to enlarge what we've got compared with if we went to trash pickup. We might be spending more of our taxpayers' money by not going to trash pickup. And and I, I tend to echo the exact same thing. Well, I, I, go ahead. Right now, they're saying, are you willing to pay this or not? And that, I do not think, is capturing the fact that whether you're going to pay for it or not, you're going to pay you're for gonna it. Pay, you're going to pay for it anyway. $3 million for and that 30 was years ago. And that was years ago. 
it's four or more at, comfortably. And I think that cost is going to be coming down one way or the other. So, you know, the whole con the whole reason why we went down this path was because of the cost it was that was going to be necessary to bring up collection within the Moyoc Township it, just to be able to function right now because it is it is a nightmare on the weekends. And so, yeah, I I, I appreciate it, but I I'm not sure we really captured. It's always hindsight, right? We we sent out an well. I guess maybe we should ask this question a little set a little differently. I think there's three options: leave it the way it is and pay X number of dollars extra a month to cover the cost of expanding Panther Landing. B get collection. I think at the end of the day, when you look at it, it's going to be a couple of bucks, one way or the other. Maybe more expensive, maybe less expensive to get curbside collection, and you know. At the end of the day, people can still drive and dump it at the wastewater, but you can't keep it at that rate unless we get a lot of it off the street. So, well, the other thing is too the yeses and the noes. You know, I mean, if the survey was sent out and just say I live in Eagle Creek and I fill the survey out and I said no, I don't want to pay fifteen to twenty dollars a month more because they're already think, paying they're for it. They're thinking that's on top of what they're thinking. What they're paying. already paying. I mean, I, I see it that way. I mean. Well, that, that, that begs the next question. Do you currently have a service? You know, this would not be an addition, right? The, the, the whole I'm thing surprised is that, that many skewed. people right, participated, right. which I'm, is there good. There could be 100 people in that right there from Eagle Creek that, well, no, I'm not going to pay for that. I'm already paying for it through exactly. Eagle Creek, right? Or, or any other neighborhood. So it's not even really adequately describing what's going on. Well, the cost to run the Moyoc Convenience Site is $430,225.50, according to the report on the 19th. And then the cost estimate for just the Moyoc Township to do curbside is $829,692. Mm -hmm. So that's two times the cost of the convenience site. Um, we're still going to maintain the convenience site, so now we're in for, I don't know, $1.3 million. Um, but that's not capturing the yeah. four million that, or more that it's going to cost to get that wastewater, that that waste site up to speed to well, handle the capacity. And well, I think we, I think we need to have a proposal, put our request for proposals on re-engineering that site so we know what we're dealing with dollar wise. Mm -hmm. well, we have a motion for Yep. So we have a motion. I will amend. Kevin, so we're discussing, but uh, the amendment to Kevin's motion that we do RFPs and see what it actually would cost to expand that convenience site. Can I amend my motion to add that? Because we did talk about that after I said the initial. I guess we can. So, so, I, so. Mr. Chairman, I would suggest that we either vote to kill it or then we can entertain another motion, which is a completely different course of action. Well, that, yeah, that would be probably better. That would be cleaner. All right, so we have a motion to deny a second on the floor. Any further discussion from the board? So all those in favor of, of not doing this, aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah. Nay. Nay. All right, that's four to three, so that one's dead. All right, so, but you would like to suggest that the county staff go out and look at what the cost would be relative to Re redoing the site to nowadays. Be fair. I have to because we voted we're not going to do trash. No, no, uh, that's just a separate direction just for the staff to go on. We do, do RFPs and see and then come back to this if we have to. Okay. And do a comparative cost analysis. So, would you what? like a design? I'm afraid we won't be able to get an accurate uh, cost estimate without a design. <laughs> Well, Rebecca, if, if, if you ask somebody to do our, if we put an RFP out there for design, isn't the expectation is it something to be awarded? Yes. If, if we, we'd go out for a request for qualifications for an engineering firm. Yeah, so if we're just doing it to get some information for our benefit, well, they would, I, I they don't think that's able. right to do that. They, 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 right. Would go to, they would go to a full design right. so that we could then get estimates of what it would cost. To expand the facility because you're talking about what fence asphalt in it like concrete the original fence, $3 million concrete. design i believe was Decker similar concrete. to the concept that uh chairman white spoke about where you would drive 
up to full sort blown of design. Yes. Yeah. 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 Really, re design. Make it then make then it really flow and work better than let's just drive around and find out which bin's open, right? And hope it's open. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not really a motion, but I guess it's just a, dire a direction for staff to go well, into at this point. And Mr. Chairman, if curbside is off the table right now. I think from county staff, we need to know what the next step, acknowledging the fact that, you know, we're going to need $4 million worth of improvements, what that's going to look like, mm -hmm. and, you know, start looking in that direction. So, I mean, I, I don't know that we could get a rough order of magnitude, but part of, remember, stormwater retention, you know, all yeah, you <laughs> got all, that. All, all right. that stuff gets to come into this because of what we're, what we're yeah. intending to do, and, you know, and... I would suggest once we know that cost, we might see that this might different. be a better option. But the other thing is too, like I said, it's not just. I mean, I know we're talking tonight just the Moyoc, the Grandy site. I mean, it's like a hangout. That place is popular too. It's super busy on the uh, weekends as jumping. well. Yeah. And I'll say if, uh, if we move forward with renovating the existing site, that cost would be shared over the entire entire right. solid waste fund. Because it goes into the fee schedule, right? Yeah. Yes. But I can stop in Moyak anytime I want to and drop off. I can go to any center I want to the county. So if I'm driving up to Virginia or hanging out, I can swing in there and drop stuff off. Oh, but so. you want me to pay for that down on the south end of the county while the north end of the well, county. As long as they can come down and use mine, I don't care if they use theirs. <laughs> <laughs> it happens anyways. If you got the trash curbside. All right. All right. Well, we're getting pretty far afield here. So um, it sounds like we uh, we got to have more discussion on this outside of this meeting tonight. More probably for. Uh, so then obviously we're going to proceed forward with Panther Landing and planning yep. for its expansion. So we we, yep. we will take the board's direction tonight and okay. move forward on uh, working toward that and bringing you back some numbers of what the cost will be. Perfect. Thank you. Anything else for the uh, county staff on this agenda item? All right. We need a break before we jump into anything Probably else? Recess. No. Good? Okay. I'm good. All right. Old business. Ordinance of the Kirtuck County Board of Commissioners amending Article 4, Chapter 12 of the Kirtuck County Code of Ordinances regarding parking upon the road or shoulder of Stillwater Court, Lost Lake Court, and Barefoot Path Villages at Ocean Hill and Corolla. Madam County Attorney. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I presented this ordinance amendment to you all at the last meeting, but because it's an ordinance amendment, it required a majority vote. This is just adding three streets at the villages at Ocean Hill to that laundry list of, of roads that we can prohibit parking in Chapter 12 of our ordinance. And per statute, their board of directors, they adopted a resolution and submitted to us a written request for this. Okay. Any questions from the, st from the board on this one? All right, since it's my district, uh, yes, sir. And we'll the only thing I was going to add is that uh, we did make it clear to them and, and we discussed this last last meeting that, you know, with this, they are a private road. They own storm cleanup. They own all of the other challenges that occasionally occur uh, with private private roads. So They do, and I can certainly remind them of that in a letter. I was going to say what he said. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, with that, would you like to put that into a motion, Mr. Beaumont? <laughs> Since you previously discussed it, go ahead. Fire well, <laughs> okay. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I move uh, to approve that uh, uh, regarding the property, basically uh, amending Article 4, Chapter 12 of the Kirtuck County Court of Ordinances regarding parking upon the road or shoulder of Stillwater Court, Lost Lake Lane, and Barefoot Path Villages at Ocean Hill, Kerala, with the stipulation that our county's attorney will ensure that they know that by the Board of Commissioners taking this action, that they own all um, potential uh, impacts to that neighborhood where typically there would be uh, debris pickup following uh, hurricanes or storm events, that they uh, assume all liabilities and costs associated with uh, those types of operations. Thank you, sir. I will second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Next item, item B, public hearing of local historic landmark application 
for the Gideon C. Bosswood Jr. house located at 198 North Gregory Road and, and including 204 North Gregory Road in Shawboro, North Carolina. And with that, let's see Ms. Turner coming up. Good evening, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening to the board. Um, tonight you are hearing what is the second application in the county for a local historic landmark designation. Uh, you may recall that the Historic Preservation Commission was established in 2017. Uh, the commission did work to adopt an inventory of historic properties that um, are able to apply for this designation. And um, the local landmark designation is a voluntary program. All owners must consent to the application. It's an honor that means that the community believes the property deserves recognition and protection. And property owners are eligible for annual 50% tax deferral as long as the property's important historic features are maintained. And that's done through reviews of exterior changes with our Historic Preservation Commission. So to designate a property as a historic local landmark, a property or um, building site area or object must be found by the commission to possess special significance in terms of its history, prehistory, architecture, archaeology, or cultural importance, and to retain the integrity of its design, setting, workmanship, materials, feeling, or association. And tonight we have the application for the Gideon C. Boswood Jr. House, which is owned by Mr. and Mrs. Stewart and Mary Jo Winley who are, are present tonight in the audience. Um, they're the members of 198 and 204 North Gregory Road in Shawboro, and they've applied for this designation for their property. Uh, the property is in the inventory that I previously um, spoke about. It's number CK0266, and the property's lo located across the street from the Roberts Brothers farm. And you can see here on the aerial photograph, photograph you can see the house um, and the acreage behind it as well as a, a lot that fronts North Gregory Road which is part of the application. The property is uh, proposed for designation for both its historical and its architectural significance. Um, with respect to the historical significance, the house is associated with Gideon C. Boswood Jr. who was a prominent and highly respected citizen of the county. Um, he served six terms in the North Carolina General Assembly, and he was a farmer, merchant, politician, and operator of a cotton gin. Again, the, pro the proposed area does include both parcels. Um, information regarding that those parcels are in your agenda packet, page 169. That's the first page of the landmark report that was prepared by the applicants. Uh, the, the, the larger property there is about 11.02 acres where the house is located, and the lot that fronts North Gregory Road is 0.92 acres for a total of 11.94 acres. And you can see that the, the lot and, and the way that the house is set, the lot really um, helps to create the rural farm setting of the property and the view from North Gregory Road. The house is also proposed for its architectural significance. It's a colonial revival style home. Uh, the colonial revival style drew on the complete historical spectrum of European and colonial American housing styles and dominated domestic building during the 20s and 30s, 1920s and 1930s. According to Virginia McAllister's A Field Guide to American Houses, identifying features of colonial revival include accentuated front door, normally with a decorative crown or pediment supported by pilasters or extended forward and supported by slender columns to form an entry porch. Doors commonly have overhead fan lights or side light lights. The facade normally shows symmetrically balanced windows and center door and windows with double hung sashes usually with multi-pane glazing in one or both sashes and windows frequently in adjacent pairs. And I'd like to um, share with you some elevations of the house and give you just a few details. But you can see here, colonial revival style homes has the has facade symmetry, a central pedimented doorway, porticos. This particular house was constructed in 1928, and it remains in its original location in a rural farm setting. Here's the front east side elevation. Has many of the elements that I just spoke about, including a centered accentuated front door with transom and side lights, 
a portico with Doric columns and pediment and a facade of symmetry and formality. Um, there, there are uh, large nine over one double hung back box sash windows. They're symmetrically arranged in twos and threes. You can see on the second floor it's in twos, the ground floor in threes. Uh, here's a closer look at that front entry pediment. Um, central located tile portico on the front of the house has a gabled roof with pediment, two Doric columns, and a six paneled original door with a transom and side lights. Uh, the south side elevation of the house uh, has a century located large tile porch with a hip roof that extends nearly the length of the house. A large original masonry brick chimney extends from the hipped roof and is capped. And you can see here the porch has four door columns and a centrally located exterior French door leading into the formal dining room. The rear elevation of the house. Um, there was actually a back porch of the house which was removed in 1974 and this den with two car garage was added. You can see the original hipped roof on the back of the house matches the dormer uh, window, uh, matches the one on the front of the house. And there are double hung box sash windows on the house's second floor. Those are also paired and symmetrical. And here's the north side elevation of the house that contains four single, two over two double hung box sash windows. Um, and the original masonry brick chimney on the north side of the house is capped and non-functional. You can kind of see in this picture, um, there is this outbuilding, a boiler room, um, which was built a uh, small square cinder block building with a hip roof built in 1957. And this building contains a hot water boiler that provides the home with heat in the winter and domestic hot water year round. So those are the features of the property. The local landmark designation report that is in your agenda packet tonight was submitted to the State Historic Preservation Office for review. And that office issued a letter that notes that the Boswood House is of special local significance in Curry Tuck County because of its architectural integrity and its association with Gideon C. Boswood Jr., a prominent farmer, merchant, and politician. And staff and the Historic Preservation Commission recommends adoption of the designating ordinance that is found in your agenda packet. Um, the owners are present. They have a lot of knowledge of the history of the house. I'm sure if you had questions, they'd be happy to, to talk about that. And just one more thing, because I told the Historic Preservation Commission at the last meeting, I would mention that we did um, hold a tour of historic homes in Shawboro in October on the 15th, and it was well attended. It was a great event, and uh, look, look out for potentially more tours in the future. And I'd be happy to answer any questions about this landmark uh, application at this time. No, no questions. Any questions from the board? Comments? All right. Thank you, Mr. Turner. I've been in the house a few times, and it's a wonderful old home. It's been well Looks like it's been well maintained. Care of. It's a very beautiful property. I thought Mr. Winley, he was my chemistry and physics teacher in high school. I thought he was here because I was getting sworn in tonight. I right. <laughs> No, it is a beautiful home. It is. Owen used to run around chasing a ball as a boy. You know. <laughs> right. Owen, Owen cut the grass the first time it was needed. <laughs> All right. Uh, would, would, would you guys like to come up and add anything tonight? Or applicants for this property? Um, Ms. Turner did a wonderful job. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, well, at this time, um, this is a public hearing, so I'll open up public comment. I do not have anyone signed up to speak tonight. Um, is there anyone who would like to speak on this topic tonight? Seeing none, I will close the public comment. And, uh, Mr. Chairman? Close the public hearing and open the floor for a I would motion. be happy to move for approval that the historical landmark application for the Gideon C. Boswood Jr. House, located at 198 North Gregory Road, including 204 North Gregory Road in Shawboro, North Carolina. What a great place to live. Uh, be approved. Okay. All right. I guess I'll give it to Owen. He was a little quicker. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Hearing none, it carries unanimously. Thank you. All right. New business. Item A, recommendation of award for emergency pumping facilities in Ocean Sands. North and Crown Point Service District for watershed improvements and delegate signatory authority to the county manager. 
Yeah, we'll get just a second. Let them filter out. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. Good night. Eric, how many more months we have you here with us? I don't know. A character? Done a... Consignment? <laughs> yeah. It may be years. Okay. All right, moving this along. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... All right, they're out of here. Ready? Yes, sir. Lay it on us. All right, so Ocean Sands. I um, wanted to start off by saying that pumping of flooding from stormwater is regulated by the North Carolina Division of Water Resources. So anything we do is under their direction and guidance. Uh, they only allow us to pump stormwater to the ocean in a major storm event and when it meets specific criteria. Ocean Sands is one of those communities hey, that... I, can you shut the door or something? Let me open it. So tell them can't to shut the down. door. Well, we can't shut the door. Yeah, just tell them to move on. Just tell them to move on. Can we shut Stay. the door? Okay. Oh, never mind. Shut the door. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. All so, right. Ocean Sands is one of those communities that we've had to pump in quite often in most hurricanes is to be expected. So um, the pumping in the past has been we rent pumps and we have to rent the hoses, um, very labor intensive and time consuming. Uh, when we do set up the pumps, we typically have to enlist the help of the fire department where we have lay flat hose. Uh, you have to lay it out from the point where it's being flooded all the way to the ocean. Um, Sometimes that's as much as a, a thousand feet per site. Um, it could take the fire department all day long. Um, and um, so with this project, this project would install permanent pipe that would be buried underground from the major points in ocean sands that get flooding. Uh, we bid out three sites to install permanent pipe, uh, one in Crown Point, one on the lake, and one in Section F. And those are our worst areas. Uh, this is 12 inch pipe that'll be buried. Um, it'll extend, we'll have a drop inlet where it floods and then it'll have a pipe that'll extend all the way to the dune. And at that point of the dune, we'll have a, a stub up, a, like a dry hydrant, where when we do have permission to pump to the ocean, mm -hmm. all we have to do is bring in our pump to that point at the dune, hook up our suction, to the stub up, lay our hose across the dune, and we're in action. So you would you put the stub on the back side of the dune, basically? On the land side yeah, of the okay. dune, not the ocean side. And so um, with this, we, um, we bid a project. Um, we bid the project on November 22nd of 2022. Uh, the bid came in at $568,250. Um, Eastern Carolina Construction was the low bidder. Funds are in the stormwater budget to pay for this. So with that, staff is recommending that we award this project and um, authorize the county manager to execute contracts. Okay. And I assume that the uh, stormwater district's in favor of getting this done ASAP. Yes, sir. They've, right. they've been pushing this a long time. And All right. Any, uh, any, any more questions or comments for the staff? All right. Well, then I'll make a motion, uh, since it's my neck of the woods, to uh, approve. Second. Second. Thank you, Selena. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you, sir. Are you going to be you going to be staying up here for the next one? All right, item B: recommendation for award draining, award drainage improvements at Benito Street and Whalehead Subdivision. Authorize county manager to execute those contracts. So Whalehead is another stormwater district that has a long history. Um, we started back in 2010 with Phase One of the Wellhead drainage system. Uh, that wellhead drainage system is a groundwater lowering system where we have buried infiltration pipes, 
perforated pipes that drain to a pump station and discharge out to a common point. Um, we've installed 10 of these systems on the east-west streets within Wellhead. Uh, so we have a good track record and they do work well. Mm -hmm. So Benito is one of the last streets in Wellhead that does not have a drainage system. And they have a, a, a major issue with flooding on that street. Um, so this being one of the last, this is phase five actually. So this project is, has proven technology. Um, this will be another groundwater lowering system. Uh, we'll install it along the, uh, the road shoulder of that Benito Street, the drainage system, the infiltration pipe. It'll go to a pump station that we'll construct and tie into the common header to the discharge. So everything's laid out, ready to go, uh, planned in the master plan. So, uh, so we designed it. We bid it on, the project was bid for Benito on um, October the 18th. Um, the low bidder was Envirotech. The amount was $1,499,625. Funds are in the budget for this project in the drainage district. So staff is recommending that we move forward and you authorize the county manager to execute contracts. My, my Mr. Chairman, this is a report to you in the management report. We received actually a Golden Leaf grant uh, in order to allow for us to have sufficient funds oh, cool. uh, to, right. to, yeah. to do this project. We just um, got announced yesterday or December the 1st that we received a $250,000 grant from Golden Leaf towards so, this project. So some of the historicals on that, <clears throat> just to, for those that were not aware, uh, Benito was when the original wellhead improvement drainage water groundwater lowering system was designed and installed. Uh, Benito was claimed by uh, North Carolina Department of Transportation. They uh, at the time said that they did not want to play with us and allow us to do and install that system at the time. Um, fast forward a bunch of years. Uh, North Carolina DOT offered to contribute $500,000 to the project. Then the MAP Act and the impact of the MAP Act uh, occurred, which was which cost uh, North Carolina DOT $1.3 billion with a B. Um, and through poor business decisions and management in areas that were not part of Division One, so at no fault of ours, but the loss incurred by DOT cost basically us $500,000 associated with this project. Eric, I thought, wasn't there an a, uh, outflow uh, pipe increase also part of this upgrade? That was a previous project you may be speaking about. Um, well, we, I know, we I know Wellhead was talking about the two kind of at the same time. Has that already been done? Sailfish, we updated Okay, so that was the one on Sailfish, got that. And then the other thing, if I remember correctly, this is going to result in an, in a significantly wider sidewalk on Benito, yes, sir. which is one of the major yeah. through fares from Monterey Shores to get oceanfront. So that that's a good thing. We'll upgrade and that little existing four-foot sidewalk to an eight-foot sidewalk. If you're lucky at four. And then the other thing is, if a foot wash station goes in Benito, it won't flood every time someone washes their feet. <laughs> that's all I have. So we only had one individual bid on this? Af and that was the second bid. So the wow. first time we opened it, we didn't, you have to have three bidders for a formal bid, so we have to reopen it, and we only got one the and second And then you can time. accept it at that point then, yeah. But wow. um, okay. it's, it's kind of the way the economy mm -hmm. is these days, it seems like. But fast forward what Commissioner Beaumont was saying about the DOT situation. So that was about two years ago when we thought we had a grant from them, which got taken away from us, we felt like. So even it took us two that. years. Basically what happened is in the past two years, we've been building up their fund balance to be able to afford oh, this right. project. And, yeah. and Wellhead and owners decided to leave the stormwater tax in place so yeah. in order to do this, this exact thing. Right. So it's that. Going. It means yep. 
And oh. as far as shoulder reconstruction, there's there's no shoulder left in Benino anyway. Well, basically what we'll do is take all the landscaping and split rail fences, anything on that, and we'll make it into a sand stormwater basin like you see on the other streets and mm -hmm. plant a beach grass. And it's basically along the shoulder of the road. So it is on state property and not on private property. And All right. Any further discussion from the board? <laughs> All right. Commissioner Bowman. Move for approval. Thank you. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you all. Thank all you, right. sir. Next item, item C, recommendation of an award for construction of the Craw ABC okay. store, <laughs> finally, and authorize the county manager to ex execute those contracts. All right. So you have before you tonight the recommendation of award for the Corolla ABC store. Uh, we received two bids for the project, and the low bidder is A.R. Chesson, and the amount of $1,828,000. Um, staff recommends award to A.R. Chesson. Hmm. All right. Well, well Mr. Comments? Chairman, since I serve on the ABC board, in every meeting I go to, they <laughs> want to know when we're going to get our new store. I move for approval to authorize the county manager to execute the contract. I'll second it. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Item D, public works building, um, design build amendment, guaranteed maximum price, and uh, delegation of signature authority to the county manager once again. Yes. Oh, hi. Oh, it's been right. a long time. So tonight you have uh, the guaranteed maximum price for the Public Works Maintenance Building before you in the amount of $1,968,388.08. Um, this is for a new facility that will be located adjacent to the county fuel farm and airport. Uh, it's a 6,000 square foot metal building that will provide four offices, about 1,000 square feet of workshop space, and then 3,000 square feet of garage space. I said, we need a, do we have any hangar space in there? No hangar. We, we need some more hangers, don't we? <laughs> All right. Uh, any comments, questions, concerns from the board? I, I do. Yes, sir. Because this is a great opportunity for those that are watching or will watch. Um, there's been some lack of understanding about what goes on when you build a big building, right? Um, a lot of folks uh, think, you know, basically as soon as the contract's done, we're going to get out there, cut down trees if there's trees, but we're really going to start excavating, and, and within the next week max, we ought to start seeing buildings going up. Can you briefly, and, and and this is a fairly simple structure compared to something like, oh, let's say a, an elementary school that has like, you know, core capacity of 940 <laughs> students. Can you, can you just go down, it takes this long to a des, you know, for design, this long for engineering. It, just give us a rough timeline because, you know, it, none of this is quick and it's all extremely deliberate and, you know, when we design and we plan for things well, they come out well. And so if you could just kind of give us an overview of the whole process. Sure. So uh, we went out for qualifications for a design builder for the project. Typically that process from writing the RFQ to selecting a design build team is, I'd say, about five to six months. Uh, beyond that, we have uh, award of the project, which comes to the board. We enter into an agreement, uh, process that agreement, and then the team goes into design, which can take anywhere from six months to a year, depending on, on the size of the building. In this case, I think we entered into the agreement in April. So the budget that's presented to you tonight is based on a, a hard bid that was completed at 75% design. Um, so tonight we're before you with the design build amendment, which is the guaranteed maximum price. And then moving forward, once we get that portion of the, the contract signed, uh, we'll let, obviously let the, the team know that we're ready to get underway. I believe they'll mobilize at the end of January, and I think we're looking at completion in early 2024. So when we started this process, right, 
and for the record, we own the land that this is going on. So Correct. We, own we didn't have land. to go shopping for land. We didn't have to, you know, decide that this was exactly where we wanted it to be. You know, we own the land. Mm-hmm. So from the time we closed on the land till the expecting, clo- you know, opening of the facility, how long? Ballpark. For this like two years, right? No. Mm-hmm. For this particular project? Right. Well, we, I, I mean, it's, we didn't have to purchase any property. So, uh, yeah, I mean, probably from start to finish, yes, I, two years is probably. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, two years for a fairly simple building on land that we already owned. And we're, we're very familiar with what its drain, its challenges, and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Yes. That's yeah. all I had. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Uh, well, it's over in your dirt, would you? I would so move for approval. <laughs> Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you all. Uh, item E, consideration of a license agreement allowing use of county-owned property by the Corova Beach Volunteer Fire and Rescue for parking and boat mooring. Yes. So I believe the Corova Beach Volunteer Fire Department chief approached the county manager about their need to use the land that we own across the street from their building for parking in a boat mooring area. So I drafted this license agreement that allows them to do that just for that purpose, um, subject to your approval, and they there's different provisions in here that favor us in that if they want to do anything to the property, they have to get permission. Um, if they need to get any permits, that's on them. Um, they have to do that and, and anything that's involved with that. We can terminate this agreement as long as we give 60 days written notice if we believe that if we need that for anything else um, or if they breach the agreement within 30 days. Um, so those are some major terms mm-hmm. um, so it's it's up to you whether you would like to grant this them this license um, it's for a, a vehicle parking area a boat mooring area the property across from their building most of all of y'all have been up there that they've been using this lot for years they help keep it clean the, the way back that was there was a bunch of junk cars and crap out there. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So they've been they've been at it for a while. They basically they want to go in and fix the fence, just put rail fence up there and repair that, um, and keep the area up. And and when they do events and stuff, it applies allows for extra parking for them. So that was the reason for bringing this forward. What's what's the boat mooring? On the it's on the canal, so they can. I mean, what boats do they plan to moor there? I guess I is my know. question. They, they, they have boats. They some indication boat. they're going to. If they don't already have it, I they think they have a boat. They have a boat. Yeah, yeah they have a, I guess, a, a boat I'll, they use in rescue yeah, operations. I've actually there. parked the sh- I've pulled the sheriff's office. Well, I just, to I just want to make sure it's not a, a mooring for fun or a mooring of convenience. That it's, I, I, uh, this should see. only be for, f- for fire use, right? That was going to be my question. Is, is right. it, can anybody, will anybody no, else it, pull up there? It, no, or? it's, on, it's yeah. only for the fire department and its official yeah. use. Yeah. And like you said, I mean, they may have some guys that are volunteers at Corova that live on Knott's Island. And, I mean, if they came over to assist with something, that would So if Kevin and the Sheriff's Department pulls up, we can find them then, if it's just for the fire department. I'm just Kevin. I'm just yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I, Kevin, I'm, I'd be really concerned about opening that door. <laughs> Which uh, door about About Knott's people Island? that would respond to an event from Knott's Island, would get in a boat and, and use that as... Uh, probably didn't happen, but... Well, my concern is, oh, well, I was coming over to help. Right. I, I just don't want to see it. I mean, I get it. I see it abused. But, it, to, it, but it, that opens a door for abuse. It's going on all along. It's not, there's nothing You don't new bring the here. beer cooler over. Right, right. Just don't bring the beer. So it's been going on all along. We're just putting it okay. into writing now, okay. basically. So. I thought they ended anyway. Right, right. <laughs> all right. So any further discussion on this? Uh, seeing none, then I will uh, make a motion to... Uh, Approve. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Item F, consent agenda. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Move, Move. for approval. Second. 
Thank you. <coughs> I'll signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Can I have a motion to adjourn, please? So moved. Second. Third. Third. Paul. Kidding. Kitty and Paul. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you all.